Hello everyone, I am presenting our work on the importance of image encoding in automated chest x-ray report generation. Um, so the outline of our work is the, the outline of the presentation that I'll be presenting is the following. So first I'll talk about the motivation and the problem statement, then I'll go over the literature view, then I'll talk about the image encoding methods that we have used. So I'll describe the, method, the methods in more details and the, in the end I'm planning to give some of the uh, future work suggestions. So the motivation for doing this work is that there is a shortage of, shortage of radiologists for on-time diagnosis of chest x-ray images and this was prevalent in COVID times. And the problem statement is the following is that given a chest image of a chest x-ray who goes to generate the report and report usually consists mainly of two parts findings and impression. Findings has the general observation from a doctor and impression has the final conclusions of, from the doctor. And uh, it's a bit different than image captioning because image captioning usually generates a couple of phrases while uh, chest x-ray report generation needs to generate six to eight sentences uh, report, right? So a bit of different methods need to be used. So previous methods primarily employed the following things. So firstly, there have been a lot of work that use the hierarchical LSTMs, where one LSTM is used for uh, sentence topic generation, while second one is used for uh, for word generation within for each topic. Also, there have been several works that use transformer uh, decoders, and some works uh, either use template uh, template based methods fully or in hybrid with some LSTM methods. The encoding method throughout all the previous works have been more or less the same. It's been a CNN, some pre-trained DenseNet or ResNet. And there have been some other works that use a bit uh, different modifications for training methodologies. Some use reinforce, uh, reinforcement-based algorithms, some use graph, uh, graph methods, and some use the BERT-based models to do the training in, in terms of uh, image in, in terms of report embeddings and uh, based on the all the things that we have looked through based on the pre all the previous work that we looked through we decided we decided to suggest several improvements and we mainly focused on the uh, image encoding part because image encoding has been primarily understudied and uh, in our the, our work has two main contributions first one is we compare four different image encoding approaches along with three different uh, decoding methods to understand their relative importance and one of the encoding methods we produced is an old one called the uh, faster clip visual encoder, which I'll explain more in more details. So the general setup is the following. We have four different encoding methods, fine-grained visual encoder, clip-based visual encoder, cluster clip visual encoder, and direct visual encoder. And we employed three different decoding methods, transformers, M2, and uh, RN and RN, which is basically hierarchical STM in a way. Now I'll talk about each of the encoding methods and decoding methods in more detail. So first one is a direct visual encoder. It's basically a dense 121 model trained end to end with the decoder. We chose this backbone because this was the most common backbone used in a lot of works. And this acts as a baseline for our studies. Uh, second method is a fine grained visual encoder. Basically it consists of two classifiers one course classifier that is trained on 14 labels taken from the chest expert checks from chest expert uh, labeling library and second one second classifier is based on a fine grained labels that we got using the chest expert and the spacey uh, spacey is an nlp library and basically we got extra labels in the form like uh, severe pneumonia moderate pneumonia etc and trained the classifier on those labels and the backbones we tested several several so several of them and the one that showed the, the best performance was the convex mole, which had the highest ROCAUC value, and we employed it as a backbone for both coarse and fine grained classifiers. Um, third encoding method is a clip visual encoder that is based on a contrastive language image pre training by OpenAA. And uh, the main catch here is that a clip uh, text encoder is limited in, to 70 tokens, but then 70 tokens with a binary pa pair encoding. Uh, might might not uh, catch all the whole report. That's why we just selected impression section, which has the main observations as an input to 
text encoder and there is an image encoder which passes the image itself. And another important aspect here is uh, that hyperparameters need to be carefully selected. And the hyperparameters that I work the best are given on the slide. And the last encoding method is the null encoding that we produce that we uh, propose as a classic clip visual encoder. And when we were designing it, our goal was to generate distinct embeddings, and uh, we such that um, uh, the co the coders can uh, differentiate between different uh, semantic uh, information present in the image. And the, the training method is the following. So during a uh, training stage, we take an image and we pass it uh, through one of the filters. We have K filters in total, and the K in our case it was 13, which corresponds to the labels from a Chexbird, Chexbird library. And uh, so, and then we take the impression section as well of the same image, and we get its Chexbird label. So let's say it's uh, label 5. So we take the fifth filter output from the convolved CXR image, and uh, we match match uh, the the filtered image with the uh, impression section using clip method, right? However, so in the in, in the training stage, we only use one out of thirteen uh, filtered images. However, during inference stage, we will we'll have to use all thirteen because we don't have ground truth uh, impression section, right? So we use all thirteen sec all thirteen filtered images. And pass it to the text decoder. Um, and uh, we use the same training hyperparameters as in case of a clip visual encoder. Uh, now, to generate the, the reports, we use the three different decoding methods. First one is transformer decoder. So it's, we just use the decoder of a vanilla transformer, vanilla NLP transformer. Second method is M2 decoder, which is a transformer decoder enhanced. For image captioning, and last third method is the hierarchical RNN, which I already talked about in the literature review part. So we took uh, all these embeddings, all these uh, three, all these three decoding methods, along with four encoding methods, and we ran extensive experiments to check uh, which to check their performance, right? And ba and uh, this is a big of a, this is a big table, but I'll. Uh, Summarize things that are go summarize the most important things. So first thing is that fine grained visual encoder is doing the best, which uh, means that um, which means that uh, um, extracting semantic in information must be the most important thing for producing uh, um, accurate reports, um, and it is doing the best in terms of both NLP and accuracy metrics. However, the the missing thing that we have is that both clip encoding methods are doing okay in terms of NLP metrics, but they're performing poorly in, ter in terms of uh, clinical accuracy. So here is a slide uh, mentioning things that uh, some, the first point I already mentioned in the previous slide. And um, now we're talking more about clip methods. So one of the reasons why we think that clip methods is uh, not doing so well is because uh, during contrastive training, um, clip encoder might be focusing on the wrong words in the impression section. It might be capturing wrong uh, features that are not as important. Also, uh, impression labels that are come from Chexbert might have some errors, which might cause additional additional noise in the training and error. And um, another thing that we did is like we checked whether our uh, cluster-based encoding method is working properly. So as you can see on the slide, we are getting very distinct image embeddings, uh, which was the primary goal of generating the of uh, designing this whole encoding method. And uh, another interesting aspect is that uh, the filters that we get can act as a part of explainable AI to uh, to show how the model is making its decisions based on which features from the image. And uh, the third thing that we ran with uh, clip uh, with a cluster method is that we added a catboot classifier on top of the embeddings, and we got the ROC AUC score of 0 0.71, and um, which is uh, much lower than the 0 0.83 of the fine grained visual encoder, which uh, shows why uh, we're getting such a bad uh, such a, such bad metrics in terms of uh, clinical accuracy. So it's lacking to it's lacking capturing the semantic information. 
and uh, based on everything that we have done we have some suggestions so first suggestion would be uh, developing clip models um, in a way to make them applicable in this case because they're quite generalizable they don't need specific uh, labels like even the the raw clip method method it can be generalizable to other medical domains right for report generation in other cl clinical domains and uh, some um, more um, more powerful encoding methods can also be further explored. Google Research recently published some uh, chest X-ray transfer learning based uh, model that has a public API. Also, Chexpert uh, leaderboard sh shows that they have a very good AUC, sc AUC scored uh, models, which are based on unsampling. So maybe unsampling approach might, might be something worth trying. And maybe we can uh, pre-train the backbones on uh, prior to using it, prior to using the in uh, chest X-ray report generation not just on the classification task, but also on the segmentation and detection task. And uh, this is all. Thank you very, thank you for your attention. Bye bye.